Uh, the final talk this morning will be a, a discussion of the preliminary results from the ProPaint project, and you'll see from your program that this is a, uh, a collaborative venture among quite a number of people and quite a number of institutions. Uh, the presenter this morning will be Mr. Morton Real Svensson, who is a conservation scientist and an advisor on preventive conservation for the National Museum of Denmark. So. Thank you. <clears throat> ProPaint is the uh, acronym of uh, Improved Protection of Paintings During Exhibition, Storage, and Transit. It is the name of a, a research project within the uh, European uh, Sixth Framework, and it uh, is running for three years. We are in the final year, and um, uh, the aim, or well, part of the aim anyway, is to, as it's described in our uh, description of work document, is to provide conservation staff and stakeholders with uh, innovative protection treatments used as a preventive, preventive conservation measure for paintings during exhibition, storage, and transit. In uh, Plain English, that's, this means that the, we study the protective effect of microclimate frames and uh, varnishes. And we do this uh, by uh, investigating pollution levels uh, within microclimate frames and uh, uh, degradation effects of these uh, gases. Uh, we do this by... Uh, uh, plain uh, pollution measurements uh, by uh, normal measure techniques, but also by dosimetry using uh, uh, dummy paintings uh, and uh, by uh, artificial aging of uh, varnishes. But uh, today I will uh, focus on the uh, p uh, pollution measurements that we have uh, done. As uh, it was said in the introduction, uh, this is a, a large uh, consortium. Uh, the project is coordinated by NILO, which is the Norwegian Institute for Air Research, by uh, Elin Dalin and uh, Terje Grontoft. But uh, then it comprises of uh, seven partners and three subcontractors from all over Europe, uh, museums and research institutes, and also a couple of... Uh, Companies as a company uh, making uh, microclimate frames, and there's another that's a SID uh, transporters, and a Quartz Tech, uh, uh, which is a company uh, producing uh, pollution sensors. We also have a, a panel of end user institutions, um, eight museums. Uh, who at the beginning of the project were uh, interviewed about uh, what they would expect from a project like this and uh, uh, what they, their needs would be for uh, use of uh, microclimate frames. Uh, and they also provide um, measurement sites, uh, field sites. Um, and within these eight uh, institutions, we... Uh, are investigating uh, 16 frames, uh, and they're frames containing either uh, paintings on canvas or uh, panels. Uh, a few uh, frames are tested as empty, and uh, we also have a frame with a mock-up painting. I'll just show uh, a couple of uh, examples of the different types of uh, frames. Um, this uh, Da Vinci uh, panel, Lady with an Ermine, uh, which we also use as our logo, by the way, uh, is uh, exhibited in a large enclosure, which is actually like a, a display case. It's in the National Museum 
uh, in Krakow. Uh, other frames are uh, purpose-built microclimate frames, uh, new frames, uh, which are designed uh, specifically for the the painting uh, which is in it, and uh, they are often used for permanent uh, display for for prolonged periods of time. And we are looking uh, into some uh, frames uh, which has been uh, modified or retrofitted from uh, old existing frames. Uh, we've seen several uh, examples of such in the previous two uh, presentations. Now, uh, there's already been a lot of talk about why to use frames uh, this morning, but, well, their microclimate frames are, of course, uh, offering some physical protection against, uh, well, uh, vandalism, and uh, they block ingress of uh, dust and particles. Uh, it's assumed they also uh, protect against uh, external pollutants coming from the outdoors and entering the museums. And uh, they can provide climate buffering, as we heard a lot about already. And it's uh, normally assumed uh, that uh, these positive effects uh, out weights the negative effects that may be, whoops, should I say, okay, um, of um, uh, heavier frames or uh, difficulties of uh, accessing the paintings um, and the poten potential of uh, creating a, a harmful uh, microenvironment. Um, the air pollutants that uh, we have been uh, investigating and which I will uh, talk about today are uh, a handful of, um, of uh, compounds which are generally uh, recognized as being harmful to well, materials, to museum objects. Uh, there are uh, compounds from... from generated outdoors, uh, ozone, which is a natural um, compound, and uh, nitrogen dioxide, which originates from uh, well, mainly from traffic, from combustion. Sulfur dioxide uh, is also a combust combustion uh, uh, project, which is, in Europe anyway, really becoming less and less of a problem. It's uh, really a pollutant of, of the past Internal emission generation from uh, materials inside the frame uh, uh, can be organic acids, acetic acid, formic acid, other organics, and a whole range of uh, what we call volatile organic compounds, which are really um, uh, thousands of different compounds which are uh, grouped together from some uh, uh, chemical similarities, boiling point, and so on. And it's, as I said, it's, uh, for, for most of these uh, pollutants, it's, it's really generally recognized that, that they are harmful to a range of, of uh, materials. However, to be quite honest about the volatile organic compounds, we, we don't really know the full picture. Um, as I said, uh, this is a group of thousands and thousands of, of uh, compounds. It can be that uh, a few are, can be very uh, material damaging and others are more or less harmless. This is a group of pollutants which has been studied uh, intense, uh, for, uh, very intensively for, for human comfort and uh, health studies, but uh, with regard to material uh, degradation, we don't know so much. However, as it was uh, pointed out in the, one of the previous uh, talks, uh, they may, the volatile organic uh, compounds may also have a physical uh, impact as they may evaporate and then condense again 
uh, elsewhere inside a frame and, and may uh, create these uh, ghost images or, um, or foggy uh, uh, glass surfaces. Before I show you um, some of the results we have uh, we have uh, observed or gained, I'll just uh, put a few words on the general um, behavior that we expect uh, pollution to have, uh, say, in a room. So uh, in this uh, graph, you see uh, uh, how ozone, which originates from outdoor, and, uh, for example, organic acids, which are em emitted inside, would behave in a normal size room. This is not a, any particular room. It's just a model of a, a uh, typical room. Uh, we see for the ozone that the uh, concentration is very much dominated by ventilation. Of course, the more ventilation, the more is, is brought in. If, uh, if we have near zero ventilation, there's almost no influx of, of ozone. Um, for something which is generated indoors, like, for example, acetic acid, it's uh, the other way around. If we have near zero ventilation, uh, the emission will build up to very high concentrations. But as soon as we uh, start to ventilate the room, uh, these acids will be flushed out. And uh, this, uh, the reason why ventilation is so dominating on a room scale is that, well, there's a lot of space uh, uh, there's a lot of, of, of airspace um, in relation to, to surface areas. So for uh, organic acids, for example, which originates from these surface areas, the, the source strength is not so, uh, so high. But in a very confined, small confined uh, space, like a frame, it's, it's actually... Uh, uh, the ventilation has much less effect. It's exactly the same uh, model. Uh, it, it originates from a, what we call a mass balance that balance uh, what is generated, what is uh, flowing in, what is uh, removed again by ventilation, what is removed by surface depositions. Uh, but the uh, surface to, to uh, volume ratio is much uh, changed, uh, if you remember, for, for the room, it's typically between half a square meter to maybe two square meters per cubic meter of space in a room. But in a, in a frame or display case or cabinet, uh, there's much more surface um, compared to, to the room volume. And surface um, will both act as a source, a, and a sink, so anything, uh, uh, or, or, so the effect by ventilation is, is completely uh, out, outrun by, by surface reactions. And uh, we should just keep this in, in mind when we, when we see the uh, uh, concentration measurements I show later, that, that really if we have a leaky frame as compared to a more airtight frame, may not really have any large, uh, may not do any large difference to, to what we see. It's, it's really about emitting surfaces and reacting surfaces within these uh, frames. First of all, uh, when people discuss um, microclimate frames, we always hear about uh, the air exchange rate. Uh, it's we assume that we make very airtight frames or we assume that, well, this frame is not so airtight and so on. Within the propane project, we actually measured the exchange rate of a number of the frames and uh, we found um, basically uh, the frames are performing in, in two, two levels or two groups. Uh, first of all, you should note uh, this is a log scale. So there's like a handful of frames which are 
quite airtight. They have uh, maybe 0.125 uh, exchange per day. 0.1 exchange per day means that there's only one exchange in 10 days. Um, and then there's another group which has uh, like several air changes per day, and there was one which had even more, I think 14 or 15 changes per day. This is, by the way, this uh, display case-like frame, which has not been, uh, I believe, tightened to a great extent anyway. So, uh, so we have like uh, these two, two different uh, groups, uh, much less than one exchange per day, and then several exchanges per day. If we look at the uh, external pollutants, well, something like ozone and nitrogen dioxide, which originates not only from the room, but actually from outdoors. Well, what we see, or what we measure inside the frames, is generally very low concentrations. And to be quite honest, it's often near the detection limit of the method. So 0.5 may really just be zero, or it, it's very near the, the level of noise in, in, in the measurements. And um, this ingress is, uh, of course, um, dependent not only on the ventilation rate and so on, but also what are the room conditions and, well, they vary a lot between these uh, eight inducer uh, museums, but generally uh, between 1 to 20, 50 micrograms per cubic meter. One microgram of uh, NO2 per cubic meter is, is a very good condition. 50 is a bit higher. That's actually like, well, it could be outdoor conditions in uh, Copenhagen anyway. For the uh, internal uh, generated pollutants, the picture is, is completely the opposite way around, uh, as we also could expect from the model. Uh, organic acids and VOCs were found in, um, well, we could call it moderate to high concentrations, several hundreds to several thousands of, cubic meter, uh, of uh, micrograms per cubic meters. The uh, concentration values in the, the brackets are from one frame which contain a, um, a mock-up painting, a freshly prepared uh, panel with fresh uh, paint and fresh varnish and so on, kind of a, a worst-case uh, scenario. And that's, again, uh, several times higher than, than what we see in the real frames. For the VOC, well, we, we find a a range of, of different compounds, as I said, uh, um, toluene and so on. The pinenes and limonene, uh, we actually know that they may not in themselves act as um, degradation agents, but they have the potential to be oxidized by ozone or by uh, peroxides or other oxidizing gases and turned into aldehydes or organic acids. So they could be on the route to more aggressive compounds. Uh, we should also note that there's actually compounds which are found only in the newer frames, the, the purpose-built uh, frames. And uh, I'll get back to this in, in a second. Anyway, gen the general picture we see is that, that well, the micro-environments we have inside the frames is completely different. We see here organic acids in, in various concentrations to the microclimates we see in the rooms. It's, uh, each climate is dom uh, or environment is dominated by different pollutants and in, in different concentrations. So it's, it's following the, the models quite nicely. Um, just give you a few more numbers. These are uh, uh, the organic acid uh, concentrations uh, from hundreds to, to thousands. And uh, we see this high peak. That's the, this uh, worst case scenario with completely a new frame with freshly prepared uh, painting, fresh varnish, 
fresh paint, uh, fresh uh, wood panel, and so on. For the VOC, it's even more um, um, obvious that uh, we have, in general, I, I acknowledge that the statistical material is not so big, but at, we are hinted that, that uh, in general, there, there are higher concentrations of, uh, of uh, uh, VOCs in the, in the purpose-built frames than, than in the, the old retrofitted frames. Again, we see here the uh, mock-up um, frame. So what to get of this? Well, for, for the external pollutants, what is coming in from, from outdoors and from, from ambient uh, rooms, well, blocking the infiltration by making the, the frames as, as airtight as possible is, of course, the only way. Um, um, and this can be done by... Uh, uh, sealing with um, aluminium tapes and so on, or have uh, gaskets uh, in the frame, as it has been shown in, in many examples by uh, my previous two talkers, speakers. But for the internal um, generated pollutants, well, it's really about source control. Um, it was showed uh, also previously that... oops that uh, aluminium tape could be used as a, a vapor barrier. It's a very good vapor barrier for, for moisture, but it's definitely also a good vapor barrier for uh, other gases. And uh, it can block some emission from the wood, for example. And uh, we should also explore the use of uh, inert materials. Here we see uh, some uh, back frame uh, components uh, purely made of uh, acrylics and uh, metal, for example, and sealed with uh, inert gaskets. To sum up, well, it's for sure that a low ex exchange rate of a frame protects from what's coming from, from outside, and that we see or we measure high levels of uh, VOCs inside the frames, um, and, and uh, with some uh, certainty, we can also uh, address this to the various use of, of materials. The present uh, common recommendation that, that is set every day today is that, that MC frames should be made as airtight as possible, and, and uh, we have not made the opposite conclusion so far. Um, but really, it, it, it all goes together with source control then in the, uh, for, for whatever is used inside the frames. Um, and this really comes back to what I said about the VOCs, that we know a lot about the oxidizing gases, ozone, and we lo know a lo lot about NO2 and what it does to materials. So the external pollutants, uh, we know, but, but for all the organic compounds that, uh, that uh, is emitted inside, we are not sure about thresholds and so on. So uh, this is really a, a field for further study to, to, uh, to determine the effect of VOCs on paintings and any other uh, museum uh, objects, really. And, uh, and to uh, define uh, threshold values. So uh, with this, I'll say thank you from the consortium. We see several uh, people among the, the audience here. So thank you.